In this video, we're going to be finally building a one-to-many broadcast using WebRTC. So we've actually got quite a lot to do. Let's get into it. So before we actually jump into the code, there are a few things that I need to point out right off the bat. Number one, this is the most important thing. The approach that we're going to be taking here is going to be sort of a thought exercise, more, more of a thought process. I'm not entirely sure if this is the right way. And this tutorial is not really me kind of showing you how you should build a one-to-many broadcast in a real production app. This is mostly to kind of give you a bit more of an understanding about how an SFU might work. But ultimately, if you want to build a real SFU, a real sort of one-to-many broadcast that's going to scale well, I would highly recommend that you use a real media server, something like Jitsi or maybe MediaSoup or something like that. Also, this video is not going to make any sense unless if you've already watched a few of my uh, WebRTC videos. Specifically, I want to make sure that you've already watched my WebRTC video where I talk about the different architectures, namely the mesh network, the SFU, and the MCU. Because again, this video is going to be using the SFU approach or some kind of form of the SFU approach. Also, very important that you've at least seen how I build a simple one-on-one -on -one video chat using WebRTC. If you've watched both of those videos, a link to which you'll find down in the description box below, then you're ready to jump into this video and then this is going to start making a lot of sense. So I very much recommend that you watch those before you watch this one. So I've babbled enough. I know you want me to start coding. So let's get into it. Okay, so here I am now in my terminal. I'm uh, calling upon the make dir command to go ahead and make a new folder. And I'm going to be calling this folder one to many broadcast. Okay, so now that I have my one to many broadcast folder created and I've navigated on into it, we now have to install just a few dependencies. So these are the three dependencies that we're going to be installing. We're installing Express, Body Parser, and WRTC. Now, WRTC basically is some sort of uh, node implementation that somebody created of WebRTC's spec that lives in the browser. So WebRTC itself only actually lives in the browser, but we want to make sure that our node server can basically be nothing more than a sort of WebRTC connection that all the other peers can connect to, right? Because we have this sort of centralized server everyone's going to be connecting to, which means we have to sort of be able to make our node server a WebRTC endpoint. And that's what this WRTC uh, library is. It's going to allow us to make our node server a WebRTC endpoint that the other peers can connect to. So now that we've installed our dependencies, we're going to be creating a file called server.js. And finally, we're going to be creating a folder called public. So now I'm going to open this uh, folder in my editor of choice, which for me, that's of course going to be VS Code, and we are going to start coding. Okay, so here's the first stuff that I'm doing so far far, nothing too interesting here. I'm basically just going to go and import the dependencies that we need. So I'm importing Express, creating an app instance off of the Express function call, importing body parser, and then I'm importing WebRTC from the WRTC library. So here now I'm basically just setting up some basic middleware of Express. Um, I'm basically telling it to serve my public folder statically. That's where all of our HTML and uh, JavaScript files are going to live. So I want that to get served statically. And then I'm setting up the body parser middleware. Okay, so here now we can see that we have the slash broadcast endpoint. So this is going to be a post request to uh, slash broadcast. Now here's how this actually endpoint is going to get used. The broadcaster is going to want to start streaming, start broadcasting whatever stream he wants to broadcast, right? So at that point, he now needs to go ahead and create a connection to the server because he wants to be able to only upload a stream once and only once only to the server and not to all the other viewers. So in order for his stream to be able to flow from his browser to the server, there must be a peer to peer connection between his WebRTC object and then the WebRTC object that we're going to be creating on the server. Now, the way that we're going to make that happen is we're going to have a simple post request that the browser can make with the offer that's then going to get sent down to the server via a simple HTTP post. So inside of this broadcast endpoint, what we're going to do is we're going to actually be receiving that incoming body, right? So here we have the body object. This is going to be the simple body, the payload of the post request. It's going to be including a key called SDP, which basically is going to be the offer that was made from the broadcaster. And here we're going to be setting it out as our remote description, basically allowing us to then go ahead and accept the incoming offer, generate our own answer, and then take our answer and then send it back out to the uh, client, essentially allowing us to have this sort of peer to peer connection happening between the browser and the server. Because remember, all we're really doing is we're basically just creating a simple one on one one connection between the browser and the server. So this is no different than us basically creating a simple one on one connection happening directly within the browser between two different browsers. It's the exact same idea. The only catch here is the fact that in this case, the person or the thing that is being connected to instead of it being another browser, it's actually going to be our node server. But the actual fundamental concepts of how that's supposed to happen is going to be the same. When the broadcaster starts to actually upload his stream, he's going to be uploading it directly to this peer object right here in the server. And then the server is going to take it and then sort of send it out to all the other uh, viewers, which are going to see how that works in just a moment. All right, so here now you can see that we've got this on track event specified right over here. Essentially, the on track event, if you remember, this is the event that gets raised as soon as the stream of the remote connection starts to kind of come into us. Essentially, when the broadcaster is going to start sending his stream down to the server and the server peers are going to start actually receiving the stream, at that moment, the on track event is now going to get raised. So then what I did was I basically created this function called handle track event. And this is going to be the function that's going to get called when the on track event gets raised. Now, all this function is doing at the moment is it's simply taking the stream out of either streams of zero and it's attaching it to a local variable called sender stream. We've not yet specified the variable sender stream just yet. So we're going to do that in just a second. And also this variable is going to prove to be very, very important for what we're trying to do within this uh, example. Okay, so so far, 
we have this broadcast endpoint, and this is going to be the endpoint that the streamer can basically go ahead and create a connection down to the server, letting himself only have to upload a stream once and only once to the server. But now we have to actually start working on the process of actually taking that incoming stream and sending it back out to all the other viewers. So let's start working on that process now. Okay, so first of all, you can now see that I've used the let keyword to go ahead and create a variable called sender stream. So now the sender stream variable has finally been created. And then the next thing that I've done is I've actually created a, a uh, endpoint called consumer slash consumer. And so basically, here's how this consumer endpoint actually works. Essentially, when a viewer is ready to start kind of viewing the stream, they're going to be clicking a button, which is then going to be making a post request down to this consumer endpoint. And it's going to be the basic same idea. They're going to kind of create their offer, send it down to the server. The server is going to then accept their offer, create an answer, and then send it back to them, essentially allowing us to have a kind of connection between the viewer and then the server. So in other words, for every additional person that's going to try to be a viewer of this particular stream, the server is then going to go ahead and create a new peer object. And it's going to be, and that peer object's sole purpose is going to be responsible for just kind of uh, being connected to that individual viewer. Now, the idea here is we want each one of these viewers to be able to kind of see that sort of stream that's being sent from the broadcaster. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to be making it that this particular peer that we're creating here inside of this consumer endpoint, it's going to take this sort of incoming stream that we got from here. So in other words, the broadcaster sending his stream down to the server. We're taking that stream, attaching it to the sender stream variable. Then what the consumer pair is going to do is it's going to actually take the sender stream and make it the stream that it's going to be sending back out to the other viewer. When you want to specify the kind of stream that you're going to be sending out to the other person that you're connecting to, you're basically going to be using the add track method. And so here, what we're literally doing is we're actually taking the stream that was that was received by us, by the server, from the sort of broadcaster. We're taking that very stream. And on that stream, we're then going to be calling the get tracks method. And on those tracks, we're then going to go ahead and call the add track method, which means that the stream that the server is going to be sending back out to the viewers is going to be the very stream that we got from the broadcaster. So now the whole thing kind of starts to make sense. The whole thing starts to come full, full circle. Okay, so here now in my public folder, I've created an index.html file along with an index.js file. And it's going to be in this HTML file, the sort of index file, where we're going to be referencing our index.js file. And so all we're sort of doing in this index.html file for right now is we're basically creating a button that's going to be able to be uh, clicked to start the stream. And then we're going to have a video that's going to allow us to kind of see our own uh, video as we're streaming. Okay, so here's all the code that we need to get the sort of broadcaster side of things to work. So we've got the window.onload uh, event. When the window is loaded, we're then going to go ahead and attach an event listener to the my button. And when you click on the button, it's going to go ahead and call the init function. So within the init function, we're basically first uh, call upon the browser to kind of give us or access to the video. We're not asking for audio because I didn't want any kind of weird feedback loop here. But essentially, we're asking for the uh, audio or for the video. We get the stream. We attach the stream to our own video tag so we can see ourselves as we're streaming. We then go ahead and call the create peer uh, method to go ahead and create a peer. All we're doing here is we're pretty much going to call, uh, call upon the RTCP connection uh, constructor, creating a peer object. We're specifying the on negotiation needed because here in this case, we need this event because we're the ones that's going to be generating the offer, which means we need to start and the way that we get the offers by actually having the negotiation needed event get raised. Within this function, we basically go ahead and create an offer. We take the offer, send it down to the server. The server then accepts that offer. And remember, with the way that we actually send this offer down is by calling the broadcast endpoint. We're making a post request using Axios to slash broadcast, taking our offer, sending it down to the server. The server will then respond back to us with an answer. We then take the answer and using the set remote description function, we then accept that answer. And that's how we kind of have the handshake happening between the sort of browser and the server. And then here, basically up here, we now have our peer object that's going to get returned to us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and iterate over the stream object that we get right over here. We're going to call it get tracks method, iterate over those tracks. And once again, we're going to go ahead and call the add track method. Because remember, when you want to specify what you're sending down to the server, the way to do that is by calling the add track method. In this case, of course, we want to take our own stream from our own browser, our own navigators uh, media that's now given to us. We're going to take that very stream, iterate over it, call the add track method. And that's now what we are going to be sending down to the server. And that pretty much concludes all the sort of broadcaster side of things. Now let's go ahead and work on the consumer side of things. Okay, so here's the HTML for the viewer.html file, all really doing very simply is we have created a video tag, which is going to autoplay. This is going to be the video tag. We're going to be taking the stream that we're getting back from the server and we're going to attach it to this video tag so we can actually see the stream. And then here we have a button that we can actually click on this button to start viewing the stream. So here now we're in the JavaScript file for the viewer. And once again, we have the simple window that on load when the uh, load is done, we're going to go ahead and attach event listener to the button that we're going to listen out for the click event. When the, somebody clicks on the button, we're going to go ahead and call the init function. And then here what we're doing now is we're going to go ahead and call the create peer function once again. Now the create peer function here is also going to be a uh, special find the negotiation needed because once again, we're going to have to generate that offer to then send it down to the server. Only this time we're sending it to the consumer endpoint as opposed to the broadcaster endpoint, as you can see right over here. So once again, we, we create that offer. We then send it down to slash consumer with our payload. This includes the offer. The then server will then se uh, send back an answer to us, which we will then receive by once again, calling the set remote description function, just as we did before. But the other thing that we're going to be doing here now is we're also going to be specifying the on track event. Because remember, the server now is going to send us back a stream. 
the stream is going to be the broadcaster stream. So we have to listen out for the on-track event to allow us to kind of receive that incoming stream. And so then what we're doing is we're going to specify that the when the on-track event gets raised, it's going to go ahead and call our handle track event function. And what this function now is going to do is it's going to take the video tag and it's going to take the sort of remote stream and attach it as a source object on our video tag, letting us see the um, broadcaster stream. And then here, the last thing that we need to do here, so once again, we call the create peer, this gives us the actual peer function or the peer object rather. And then here, instead of actually calling an add track, we then we now call add add transceiver. Essentially, a transceiver basically is going to be a sort of a channel, a sort of pipe that it gets created between the two peers. Now, it's basically just a channel. It's a two-way channel that goes from peer to peer. Now, you can specify what you want the channel to do. In this case, we're basically specifying that it's going to be a transceiver of type video, and it's only going to be a directional uh, transceiver, which means that we are only trying to receive things from the server. Well, that basically now concludes all the code, both of the consumer side as well as the broadcaster side. Now, let's actually try to run this application and see whether or not it does in fact work, and we can start viewing the stream of the broadcaster. So, let's see if this works. So I did just realize that there's one last thing that I missed that we have to do before we can actually start running this application. And that is we have to actually specify which port our express server is going to be listening on. Okay, so here now I'm simply saying app to listen on port 5000. And then it's going to say console log server started. Now we're finally ready to actually run the app and see whether or not it works. So back in the terminal, let's run the command node server.js. This should say server started. And now let's navigate over into the browser and let's try this out. Okay, so now we're in the browser at localhost 5000 at the root of the application. This is the broadcasters screen. Let's hit uh, simply hit the button start stream. It's asking me if you can have access to my camera. I'm going to say allow. And now you can see that we are so far getting my stream simply displayed on screen. Nothing exciting happening just yet. Now, if we check the terminal, we see that we don't get any errors. So, so far, it seems like things are going to be working well. But of course, we won't know for sure until we actually start having a viewer connect and see whether or not the viewer can also see the stream. Okay, so now we're navigated on over to localhost 5000 slash viewer.html. So, this is now the viewer screen. Let's hit view stream and see what happens. And as you can now see, the viewer is actually able to see the stream that is being broadcast from the broadcaster. Let's open up a few more tabs and see what happens. Okay, so that's a second viewer working fine. That's a third viewer seems to be working fine. That's a fourth viewer so far it still seems to be working pretty much okay. At this point, I think we've already exceeded the capabilities of a mesh network, possibly. What is that that should be five viewers at this point. six viewers at this point. So anyways, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!